Hi everybody, it's me Janet from Salon Memorables and I'm here for just a quick tutorial on how to do a fake um, stone effect um, using paints. So I have this here, hope everybody's doing well. So we are going to start off with, it's very simple, it's very easy to do. You are um, going to start out with, you're going to need obviously your project. This is just normal card stock, card, um, cardboard that I used. And um, I put this um, textured paste on a stencil here just to show you, but it can be done on a flat surface, like it could be done on a raised surface. That's why I have it like this. And uh, you're going to need, apart from your project, you are going to just need black paint here. You're going to use need gray paint just to give it like a stone concrete effect. And this gray paint, you're going to um, have it in two values, um, that normal this gray paint like this, and then you're going to put it um, a little more uh, lighter. So you're going to have two grays. If you already have it made, perfect. You're going to need a darker gray and then a lighter gray. Um, I don't have two kinds of gray. I actually mixed this one with um, black and white. Um, but of this one, I'm going to take a little bit out to use my second gray. So you'll need two values of gray. You're going to need one dark and one a little lighter. And white paint. And all this is chalk paint. But again, you can do it with acrylic, but I prefer chalk paint just because it is matte and it gives it just that even better feel and then apart from that you're going to need um, a normal flat brush like this and you are going to need a fan brush again you can use just a normal um, another kind of brush but try to have it have, be a brush that is very uh, scarce to bristles maybe a small chippy brush or something like that um, because um, that's for the dry brushing and you're going to do a lot of dry brushing here so you don't want anything that um, the bristles will be very um, tense like, let me show you here see like this something like this I don't even know if you can see see how the bristles are tight like this you don't want that because that's going to leave you with straight lines. You want something more scarce like this, where you hardly have any bristles at the end. Let me see if you can appreciate it this way. See that it looks a little scarce? Something like that. Okay. And then you're going to need a tooth used, obviously old, not using any more toothbrush. And this is just to give it a little splatter effect. You can use a normal brush, but I, I like using the toothbrush. It, just is a little quicker, gives it more of a splatter, can control it better. And that's basically it. So um, let me just do this here. So you're going to have your project, which could be this, it could be a flat surface, a raised surface, flat or raised. It's going to give you the same effect. If it's raised, it's actually better. But again, whatever your surface is. Then you are going to paint it completely black. I did this just so um, to save on time. And now the video will be very long. So you're going to paint it um, completely black, 100% painted, 100% cover, coverage, painted black here. So you can see it has a little bit of stenciling, a little bit of stenciling here. And then I also have a mold right here that I did just for demonstration purposes, but you get the idea. It could be either flat with a stencil, raised stencil, or a mold. Okay. So you're going to take, so this would have been for the black. Again, it could be any chalk paint. As you can see, I have a variety. I'm very eclectic on that as long as it's chalk paint. <laughs> then you're going to take your fan brush here and you are going to use the gray. And with the gray, what you are going to do is you're going to dry brush. Let me just get this here. Just get a little bit out. Don't get too much because since it's a dry brush, you don't want too much out at the same time. So let me just put this here. Sorry for that. And take this here and you're gonna wiggle it off. Remember you don't want too much. Let me get in here. Take a little out and you're going to start dry brushing. Very, very, I always compare this as if you're dusting, just like if you're dusting. You pick some up and dry brush in any direction. You does not have to be in one direction. As you can see, I'm doing it in different directions. And here, and again, pick this up and keep doing it like this. Like if you were dusting, dry brush is all about a light hand at the beginning until you get used to it. 
And if it's too light, go back again and keep dry brushing it. So this gray, this darker gray of the two grays you need is going to give you, I don't know if you can appreciate it there, you start seeing the details. And again, even if it was flat and you had your chalk paint, chalk paint has a way of levelizing itself. When you put it on, you see all the brush strokes and everything. With this technique, you need it. But again, um, you can add, um, you can do some kind of additive like a uh, salt wash or putting a little bit of gesso in your chalk paint and it'll give you that little bit more of texture. But if not, if you already have texture here, that's quite all right. Texture with a stone effect just makes it um, look even better. But again, you don't have to. And again, keep dry brushing. And again, it's like if you were dusting, dusting, dusting. Soft at first and then when you get the hang of it, then do it a little darker, a little harder. I like going lighter first because I am very heavy-handed I know myself and I like going light first and do it in any direction it does not have to be in a specific direction and th again this is how I do it there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube about how you can do this how you can do a stone effect using chalk paint or acrylic paints or any paints different paints but this is just the way I do it I found I've looked at so many tutorials online when I was trying to get this effect and I just picked up a little bit of everything that worked for me I always say do you do what's best for you what you find easier for you and here and with dry brushing the good thing is you can never go wrong if you went a little too heavy-handed just do more I'm um, just covered up use the black again but we're going to be doing so many layers. We're going to be do we have the black, then we're going to layer with with the dark gray, then the lighter gray, and then finally with the white. We get a little bit more gray, just a little more out. Here with the AC, it dries up so much. Get a lot of it off, and start again. And as you can see, it's going a little harder now. The more you do it, the more you get used to it, the more comfortable you feel. And what you want is something like this. You see how it just picks up the raised part of the chalk paint and of the stencil. And here of the mold, look how beautiful it looks now with that outline and that gray. Gorgeous. So what you have here is what you're going to try to do all over. So just here. And at the beginning, you will start a little slow, but then you'll just pick up unless you're good at it from the beginning. And just go here. You're going to start to pick up all of these yummy, yummy textures that this has. And again, here it looked like it went a little too strong. Don't worry. We, that's all going to get covered up, so you're good. Dry brushing, there's hardly anything you can do wrong. And there we go, more texture. And, and when the paint is starting to get sparse on your brush, just keep going because then that will give it that lighter, more detailed on it. And then here. And you're going to have some dark areas. Good, that's what you want. And see how I'm going a little quicker, a little harder? Just because I'm already getting used to it. So, And see how it's already changing? How it already looks different from that complete black slate we had? Beautiful. Okay, I think this is good. Okay, here. And here. Okay. So I think this is good. Knowing me, I always want more. So let me just take it now and just show you how it is. And remember, when it dries, it even looks different. So get this here. I think I got a little too much here, so always have a napkin handy. If you think you went a little too heavy on some areas, you could even pat it with a napkin. If not, just leave it be. It's gonna look, it's gonna look fine anyway. Just dry it. Sorry for the noise. You just need to dry it up a little. Dry it, dry it, dry it. Dry it as much as you can. 
I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm yelling. I just don't know how much you can hear me or not. Okay, perfect. So this is it here. Look at how nice it already looks. How goth, um, old, stone-like it looks just with that, just with one layer of that gray. Awesome. So now we're going to take the gray we already have. We're going to put a little bit more. Tiny bit more, not much. Put it here. And then you're going to take a little bit. Remember, this brush I used just to paint the black on it, but I'm going to use it to dip into the white. Let me put the gray back. Sorry for my arm. Okay, and you're going to take a little bit of white. Like maybe this for now and you're gonna put it in the gray and you're gonna mix it up and you're gonna pull it out you're gonna try to you're trying to make a lighter gray okay this is perfect right here okay okay so with this what you're trying to do is just do a lighter gray you're gonna still take the same brush you're not gonna clean it take it and you are going to take this lighter gray. See the difference? Okay, and you are going to dry brush over this. Get this here. And with this, what we're doing is just adding levels. Remember stone, if you look at stone, stone doesn't have just one color. It's different tones of, of grays and blacks and sometimes even smidges of white in it. And again, this one, you really have to dust it on until you get the hang of it. Here, and you're going to dust it on. And you already see, I don't know if you can already see the difference from doing it harder on one side and I am in the other just to show you that difference. Let me back it up a little. See if you can appreciate that. See? How it just brings out more detail and gives it more depth. And we keep going. Take out a little bit more. And keep going. And you're going to be dry brushing this. And again, go soft until you feel comfortable, and then you can go a little heavy-handed. And you're going to be, see how it's looking already? And here. Do this right there, and we get a little more. Should have had this ready, but I didn't. And get more white, and there we go, and mix it up. And if you don't get it completely mixed up, that's quite all right. It just gives you a nice little rainbowy effect. See? And lightly, lightly, lightly. There you go. And remember, when you get the paint off and you see the paint is going low, just keep dry brushing it because it'll give it like a little powdery effect on it. And look at how that gray is coming out. Gorgeous. It looks white, but it really is like a tone of light gray. And remember, do it in any direction. Don't make it a pattern. If something came out like a line, then just move it into another different direction. Take away that line. A little more. And 
let's do this one here. Oh, this is so beautiful. This mold looks so nice. Okay. And I look at it. Oh, so pretty. And here, make sure we get it around here. We don't want too much dark edges. But again, if you like it that way, even better. And dry brush. Good. So you have something like this. See the levels? And again, there we go. And look at how pretty. I don't know if it's too bright. But it just looks so, so nice. And like this, it's already good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put in some flex, some little specs. So let me just get this here. That's why we need this. So you're going to take some black. And you're going to do a wash or water it down. I don't even consider it a wash. It's more like watering it down. Let me get here. Get some black out. A little bit. You don't need much. Oops. <laughs> this is too much. But anyway. I'm going to put it here. You're going to get a little spray bottle or just some water. And you're going to water it down. Why? Because the way it is thick, you won't get the little specks you need. You need it to be um, very watery so it'll spray out. Get this here. Now you're going to practice. This is going to be very messy. I don't like using gloves, so just practice. There you go. Perfect. So let me just dry this up a little. Sorry for the noise. you are going to spray it with so you're just going to take your nail or your finger and you're going to pull back on it to spray in that direction what you want I always test it first on a piece of paper before you do it because you don't want to actually go on your project and then you're going to get like a big splatter let me do it on this side so you can see So you see that? That's what you want. Like a spray. A mist almost like with some droplets. And then you go here. And that's what you're going to do here. All over. Not everywhere, but just about. And this will give it that nice sort of, if you look at stones, sometimes they have like this sort of like specks in it or something. I love how this spray came out. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up maybe this way you see it little droplets and if you want more do more but again don't go overboard you don't want it to be completely covered in it just nice spray and let me just clean my hands up and this is see, I don't know if you can see the specks on it and you can do the same with white I don't want to do white I like either white or black or both i like doing more black than white because we're going to give it the last wash now of white on top dry brush on top sorry but look at how pretty look at how almost it looks like stone already so pretty i mean if you put this somewhere someone's gonna look at it and go hmm is that slate is that stone gorgeous okay so let's clean our brush sorry for the hand get this here I had two fan brushes but one was already in its last days until it finally gave up on me and I'm like I'm gonna put you to rest you're good so just dry this here again leave it to dry I like using my heat gun because I don't like to wait okay now we're going to use white, completely white, and the white is what's going to bring out 
even more the details. You can leave it like this, this is perfectly fine, or take it another shade lighter of the gray, but I like to use white on top. And um, after this, I'll show you a finished project I have. Let me just get this here. I have already some white here from what I was using. So let me just put it here. And just some nice dry brush. This one go very, very light. This one I really want you to just go light. Not too hard. Nice light touch. Some parts went a little too hard. Oh well. You can't go wrong. And here. Here. Get some white here. Pick up some more white. Not too much. And there we go. Here we go. And see how it just even the white makes everything go back and pop even more. Let me do it here. The molding is what's really going to look so nice. All these raised pieces. Remember, the dry brushing is just to hit all the raised pieces you have. If you do it on the flat surface, it'll just pick up all um, the little raised um lines or textures that your brush left with the chalk paint okay and a little more a little more i'm um, extra so i like doing everything a little more until then i went like oh too much <laughs> but it's chalk paint. It's stone effect. It's crafting. It's painting. You can never go too much. Okay, so here. And here. And again, if your brush is dry, in the sense that it has very little paint, then just go over the whole thing because it'll give it a more dusty effect. And here, here, bam, here, and here. Okay, good. Pick up some more. Okay, and get a little more flicker. And I like doing this flickers before and after because I want some to be left behind to look like behind the project than actually in. And since I'm getting too much of a spray, I'm going to add a little more water. The more water you add to the paint that you want to flicker out and like in a mist, the more misty you'll get it. Um, the less paint, the more misty it'll be. The Let me put it this way. The p more water you add, the more of like um, spray you'll get. And the less water you add, the more gloppy it'll be, depending on how you do it. Um, sometimes also depending on your brush. So I always say practice first on a piece of paper before you do this, because sometimes this can literally ruin your project and that has happened to me so always try it first and on a little more there we go and also the distance if you're going to do it closer or farther away always test it out the closer you get it the darker it'll be the farther away the more misty and spread out it'll be hope that made sense and there we go just a little bit and if you feel you went a little too hard, just go back with the white. Make sure it's dry. They're droplets, so they should dry quick, but just in case. You don't want your droplets to go away too much. And there you go. And one quick one, just to put all that back. And you're done. <clears throat> Let me clean my fingernail. 
This is your hands after crafting. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> and here you go. This is the final project. Let me dry it off really quick so the colors will pop even more. <clears throat> And this is the final process here. Now, it all depends on you <clears throat> and how you do it. Sorry. It could either look like stone. It could look like cement. Uh, if you want for it to give it more like a cement feel, you can do more sprays, more of the little droplets on it. Um, stone. There's also another way you can use it with um, a sponge. Sponge will also give you an amazing and amazing coverage. Let me get it to show you. I have this piece here and this was all done instead of with a dry brush it was done with a sponge and I don't know if you can see how it looks very very different style but also looks like stone so gorgeous and you get here and on the sides so that's the effect you get with a sponge and this is how you'll get it with um, dry brush and again, it also depends on the values. This was done more with a grayish. I did not use black first. I just used, um, this has like three tones of gray. It's a very dark gray, a medium gray, and then a light gray. And with the light gray and the sponge, with the light gray and the white, I did the, the I used the sponge. So it's really, really good. If you want to tech, if you want me to do a video on how I did something like this, just let me know in the comments and I'll do that. And I have this here. Oh, one more thing. Let me show you another thing here. So this is the inspiration piece. This is the piece I'm working on now. I just finished this one. I'm going to do the next one um, tomorrow. This is two sets. I just put some molds on it, but I don't know if you can appreciate it. I think maybe I'm too close. So you can see the droplets. I only did it in black. And then I did the same thing, painted it completely in black. Two tones of um, gray and white on top. And this is what you get. It looks amazing, amazing, amazing. This is going to be up on our Etsy shop soon. Um, and this is the effect you get. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope you liked it. Again, practice with it. It doesn't have to be on raised surfaces. It can be on flat. Um, and it just gives you a nice, nice finish. And depending on the depths you want it, you can use maybe um, instead of a black, you can go with a very dark gray and then two tones of light gray and then the white it all depends on you i'm for me it's always worked best to give it that darkness in between i always work best with black two tones of gray and one white but again just practice and um and see what it turns out thank you so much i hope you liked it um please leave me a comment down below if you want to see more techniques and thank you so much for watching stay safe bye